Hey guys, so this video is going to be an image evaluation video of the elbow. So when we do an elbow, we normally do an AP, an external oblique, and a lateral. Okay, so for the elbow, you want to start off and make sure that there is about three inches above and three inches below the elbow joint. And um, basically one inch on either side. When it comes to the AP um, of the elbow, you want to make sure that it is nice and flat on the board, so there and there should be no rotation. The lateral epicondyle is going to be shaped differently than the medial epicondyle, but you don't want them to be foreshortened or elongated or anything. You want them nice and flat up against the board. You want your entire humerus to be nice and flat up against the board and you want the entire forearm to be flat up against the board so that there's no elongation or foreshortening or anything. If a patient is unable to totally flatten their elbow, I'm going to show you guys in a later part of the video what you do for a trauma elbow. But the most distinctive thing for an AP elbow is that the radial head neck and tuberosity needs to be ever so slightly overlapped against the ulna and this joint space right here needs to be pretty open too that's what you're mainly looking for for an oblique it's a little bit different it's kind of uncomfortable and some people are not actually able to get into that correct position so you'll have to do what's called the coil method the main purpose of the oblique view is to get the entire radius totally totally not superimposed against your ulna the radial head is where most people have their fractures it's really really important to see like really good pictures of this um so if you can't if the patient is unable to get positioned in the right spot and you can't get this a nice separation right here then you have to do the coil method the lateral is a really really important view to see like another view at a 90 degree angle, obviously, because we always want two views at 90 degrees from each other. But then it also is really good in kind of um, letting you see if there's any occult fractures. So occult fractures are fractures that are like so small that you can't see it on the AP or the oblique because of the sail sign, you'll be able to see the fat pads. So but I'm just gonna show you this one because right now this one, Nothing's broken in this one. This is what a normal looking lateral elbow x-ray is supposed to look like. So the most important thing is that the um, humeral condyles are going to look like nice, perfect little circles. And you have this kind of like figure eight shape. You wanna make sure it's like kind of like a figure eight shape. That means that you positioned it perfectly. The radial tuberosity is supposed to be facing anteriorly. So the, the radial tuberosity right here is supposed to be facing that way. The radial head right here is going to be partially superimposed by the coronoid process right here. So this should be like kind of like a little triangle. So this right here is the olecranon process. It's that pointy part of your elbow. It should be nicely in profile. You can see it nicely because like with the AP and the oblique like it's like right here but you can't really see it that well. So it's going to be nicely in profile. So it's normal to see a little anterior fat pad right here. And a fat pad is like a little bit dark, but it's never normal to see a posterior fat pad. If you see a posterior, that means automatically you are um, fractured. This right here is a picture of an anterior fat pad that's normal. So you can kind of see it's shaped, uh, you can see the dark area like right here. Right here, you can kind of see that it's shaped sort of like a teardrop. That's actually okay because um, you can see anterior fat pads sometimes even when you're not fractured. It's not good though when you see an anterior fat pad that is shaped kind of so that it flares out. So right here, this is a picture of an anterior fat pad that is not good at all. So you can see right here, this little dark area, it kind of flares out. It almost looks like a little triangle. Instead of a teardrop shape, that you saw in the other uh, picture, this one's shaped a little bit more like a triangle. And that's why we call it a sail sign, because if you were to see a picture of a sailboat, it kind of has a triangle shape. When you see a picture of a boat, it kind of flares out at the sides, at the bottom. 
So that's why we call it the sail sign. If you have an anterior fat pad that kind of flares out, um, then that means that you have a fracture. This picture shows um, somebody who had a really big uh, break. So you can kind of see this dark area right here that kind of flares out. That's the anterior fat pad. So that means that there's a fracture. But then you also see the posterior fat pad right over here that flares out. And if you ever see any type of posterior fat pad, then that for sure means that there's a fracture. And so um, sometimes you won't even see the fracture on the AP or oblique view. If you only see the fat pads, then that's called a occult fracture. That means that the fracture is so, so, so tiny that you can't even see it. But there's so much evidence from the fat pads that we do know that there is a fracture. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the trauma elbow. So if a person is unable to fully straighten out their elbow, we'll have to take two separate pictures. One picture where the um, forearm is nice and straight, and then we'll have to re-expose them and do one, and you can't really see it in this picture, where the humerus is nice and straight on the board. And then I said that I was going to show you um, what you're supposed to do if a patient is unable to get into the correct position for the external oblique. So I've had to do this a lot, and it's actually really easy. You can go from just a lateral to the coil method view really easily because the patient still has their arm at the right angle. Um, all they have to do is flatten their hand. Um, instead of having their hand on its side, they flatten their hand instead. And all you have to remember is that you angle the CR just 45 degrees, kind of like to the elbow joint and it'll give you a really nice picture, and I will show you what the picture looks like. So this right here is a picture of the coil method. So um, it helps to open up the joint space right here, and you can really see the radial head really, really well. And that's really, really important to be able to see the radial head. So that is an image eval of the elbow. I hope you guys find that helpful. Thank you so much for watching.